Hello everyone, it's Amy, and I am here for week 19 of Build Your Stash and Craft. And this week, um, I told you to get a hole punch, and two milk rings, and a pack of paint brushes from Walmart. Now, I have the paint brushes here, and I've decided to kind of switch things up. We will use our milk jug rings and our hole punch next week um, because I think since we have all of these paint brushes um, and if you didn't get this pack and you got a different pack this will still work for you it also works to hold your pens and your pencils but I think we're gonna make a, a pencil holder or I mean a paintbrush holder um, this week and then we will use our milk jug rings and our hole punch next week and then the week after that is going to be dyes. So if you got your Easter dyes, um, the Easter Easter egg coloring kits with the little tablets in it, we are going to do those in just a few more weeks. So, and if you don't have any of those and you're out and about and you see some on clearance, pick up a couple of um, of the Easter egg dye kits so that you have those dye tablets or dye packets. Um, because we're going to make some dyes. So, but I think I did switch it around to make a holder for all these paint brushes because I thought that that would be a good thing for everyone and you're going to have to have a place to put them. So, all I have is I have a Quaker Oats chewy something, um, little bars. And what I've done is I've opened it up flat so that I can cut it flat. Now, if you don't have this kind of box, I was going to actually make it out of this pie crust box and I was just going to cut this in half and then I was going to put the two sides together so that it would be more but um then I saw this this box which is just a little bit thicker so I decided well I'm just going to use this box but you can use anything a cereal box this will work for any little box that you have you can use a corrugated cardboard box if you have one that's you know the size you want it to be so what I've done is I've flattened my box and I need to see this is the bottom because when we're done, we're gonna fold this back up again like this. So this is the bottom of my paintbrush holder. So I wanna go from here up. This is my bottom and I'm gonna look at my paintbrushes and I'm gonna choose my shortest one, which I had looked and it looks to be like it's gonna be this one. So what I wanna do is I want to put that at where the bottom is gonna be and then I'm going to say that I'm going to probably make my the top of my paintbrush holder right here, which is where the this portion of the brush is. And I want to look at my tallest one and put that there and see how far that's going to stick up. And actually, that will be okay. It's over halfway. If it was less than halfway, when you put your brush in there, it would want to do this really bad. So if you're over halfway... Um, it's still going to be a little top heavy because it's heavier on the top, but it's about three quarters of the way up. It should stand up fine. So this is where I'm going to cut it. And all I'm going to do is um, I've got a piece of cardboard here to cut on, and I am going to use my X-Acto knife to cut that right there. And I'm just going to measure that with my ruler all the way across so that I can cut a straight line and I'll be right back because I didn't bring my ruler. Okay, I'm back and I measured our little point to be four and a half inches from the bottom where the bottom folds up. And I did use on my ruler, and most rulers all have this, they have this little extra spot right here. It's so hard to see. But there's a little extra space here. Actually, your your measuring starts at this line. But I but it doesn't matter so long as it's all going to be the same. So I wanted to be able to butt my ruler up against there. So I'm counting that little extra space and going to four and a quarter. That's where my line is. So I just butt my ruler up there and mark it in a few different spots. I always like at least three. But then what I did was when I measured over here and I measured my four and a quarter... The box here is higher than the box here because of the way that it folds. So I don't want to measure from this line because I will be higher. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it on my line here, but go over onto this piece and measure 
and I mean mark four and a quarter right there. So that way this four and a quarter is exactly the same distance from the bottom as all of the rest. And then all I'm gonna do is I've got some tape on my ruler and I this tape is masking tape that I've just rolled up and put on there and then just kind of took a little bit of the sticky off like this because you don't want it to you know rip your box and I'm gonna line those up like this kind of hold my ruler up on a up on its edge until I get them lined up where I want them and then I'm just going to oops I need to move my ruler over a little bit line those up like that and then lay my ruler down and push on those tapey spots that's going to hold my ruler from slipping it's going to be better for me not to cut myself and um and just hold my ruler in place because I always tend to have my rulers or yeah my ruler slip when I'm cutting I have my corrugated card box underneath that I can cut on so that I don't cut into my table and I'm just gonna hold that there and just take some slices now remember take your time don't try and cut through the whole thing all at once it may seem like it will go easier but it won't you'll you'll get a much cleaner cut a much safer cut you won't slip as much if you do it this way so little bits at a time you'll get there I can feel now that I'm about through except possibly right here at this end and make sure that you are standing I'm standing off to the side I'm not pulling this towards myself I'm pulling this to my right side and there we go now my box is separated and the reason that I flattened my box was that was a whole lot easier to cut that box that way than it was to try and cut around a box that's already square. So then all I'm going to do is I'm going to connect it together like this. And I'm going to put some glue on there and I'm going to use some of the duct tape that we got for our, uh, our pin board when we did that. And I'm going to just tape around there and put some glue on it and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and I've just put glue on my flaps. These flaps were overlapping a little bit even though the box was square. So I cut a little bit off the edge because I didn't want one sitting on top of the other. I put a little bit of our strong glue that we got back at the beginning of the series. This was just some super glue, fix it all adhesive uh, from the Dollar Tree. So I put some on the flaps and fold in the first flap and then I put some on the very bottom flap and I'm gonna fold that in. And then just take a little bit of duct tape and I'm going to put a little bit of duct tape just across the bottom. And then what I'm going to do is set something heavy on it for a little while and give that glue a chance to grab hold and secure. And this is going to help hold it in shape. With duct tape you should always be able to rip it. Of course this is cheap duct tape from the dollar store but it did rip. So there we go. It doesn't matter what color this duct tape is. It's going to be covered up anyways. But now we've got a nice solid box. I want to look at it and make sure that it looks square. Now that I've put it back together. And see my flaps are coming up a little bit. So I want to put something heavy in here. I'm going to put one of my dictionaries if it fits. And otherwise I'm going to put my jar of little glass gems that we got earlier and I'm going to hold this down for a little while and then I'll be back and I will show you what we're going to do next. Okay I'm back and while our box is drying and I just did take my rocks and stick them in there because my dictionary didn't quite fit um, but I did want to show you the box is four inches wide by eight inches long. Okay, so, and we do need to know, and that's from the outside of the box to the outside of the box, it's four inches by eight inches. And also, after I cut that, and I went to put this back in with my, um, oh, there's Papa. Just one second. Okay. Um, I, w I was going to put this back in with my recycle and realize that that's about the same size. So I actually glued this one just exactly the same as the other. And um, I'm putting my spackle in my little stir sticks in there. Um, so I'm going to glue this one together and I'm going to make it two because you never know when you're going to need it. And sometimes it's good to do a few things all at the same time because it's easier. Um, what we're going to do next really quickly and then I'll come back is I just got a just this is a Cheetos box and this is now I forget 
Um, yeah. This is nine inches long from fold to fold. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just cut it off here and here and cut those folds off and I'm gonna cut one inch strips and I do have this marked in three places. One, two, and three. I'm just gonna line my ruler up there and I'm just going to cut all of these into one inch strips and then I'll be right back. Okay, so while I was gone, where we left off was I made a bunch of one inch, I had marked a bunch of one inch strips and I've now cut them all and I marked all of them down the center at a half of an inch. And that's gonna be so that we can cut to that point. So I have made, I have now got my box ready and what I've done with my box is I divided it into sections. These are all approximately five sixteenths of an inch. Um, you're gonna divide your box however you want to. I like small because this is gonna be a cross section like this, okay? And I like my little holes to be small so I can put like one or two paintbrushes in each hole. I don't want a whole bunch in a large area um, because they just get all mixed up that way. So what I have done is I have just marked probably about the width of my finger. You don't have to do this exact. What I did was I marked it and then I put those marks on a piece of paper or a piece of cardboard here and I originally did the end. And so I just, I marked the end and then I just put a mark on my little piece of paper here, turned it around and marked the other end and then just use those same marks to go through and mark these marks. And when I ran out of marks, I just moved it down and kept going. Now, the only thing is, is that here at the end, this little section is a little bit larger than all of the rest. So when you mark the other side, you need to make sure that you're marking all of these little, you're gonna make sure that you mark these same marks that you've done on this side, exactly the same over here. So you need to start there and go this way so that when you get to the end, you also have that one large one at this end. Otherwise, what's gonna happen is these will all be shifted like this because you'll have a large one here, a large one here, and then these two will be the same. So just make sure that they're the same all the way across. You don't have to make them exact at all. Um, and they don't have to be any specific size. So once you've done that, then you just go around and you cut one inch because we made one inch strips. So I just put a line at one inch. And then, let's see, I've got three sides done. And then I just took my scissors and just cut to that line. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a crisscross with our other pieces of cardboard. Oops. And you wanna try and kind of stay on those lines. You don't wanna go down too much further than that one inch march. If you can stop at that mark, that's where you should try and stop. And there we go. Now I've got those marks cut all the way around. And I'm going to need to put all the way across. This is eight inches long, so I cut my strips one by nine so I'd have a little bit um, to support them on the end. I'm gonna need one strip here, so one, two, three, four. I'm gonna need five long strips, and then I'm gonna need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven short strips. And those strips I made four and a half, I just cut my nines in half. I could have made them five inches. I would have had a little more to fold over on the outside, but that's okay. Once I cut my strips, I put that little line down the center. And then what I did was I just took my strip and I marked my box. If I can find it. This is the left side of the box. This is the right side of the box. I took my strip and I lined it up so that I had a little bit on each end. Like I said, it doesn't have to be measured exactly. Um, you just want some on each end to fold over once you get it in there, okay? And then what I did was I just took my pen or pencil or whatever because I already had these lines on here and I just made a line just like this all the way down. Now I know that this is the left end because remember, 
this gap is a little bit wider and that will make a difference. Um, and this is my right end. Once I did that, I also just kind of put it up and put one at the bottom. That just gave me like a, a place so that I would know to go straight. I'm notorious for cutting on an angle. So what I did was these are the marks I'm going to need to cut and we're gonna cut down on the long ones. And then I just went ahead and put little marks on the bottom. So when I cut this, I will cut to that center point, but I have something to line up with. So that's that's why I did it that way. Alrighty, and once I got one done, and I made myself some notes on the long ones I wanna cut down, on the short ones we're gonna cut up so that they'll fit together, um, and right here you don't cut because that's just the very edge of the box that's the outside edge of the box and we're just going to put that in there and then fold that over so once i did that use the same one always use the same one you will get the best um results from that you this is this is my template so all i did was i set it on top of my others and i just made my outside line mark and put my left on there put mark on this end and put right. I do that so that I don't forget to do it so that I know which way this goes. And then I just went in here and put the marks where all the other marks are. Just copying it is all I'm doing. And then just put it down here. Line it back up and do the same thing. Now on my outside edge ones, I draw a full line all the way across. Otherwise I forget and I cut that line. So that always kind of makes me stop and think. And then, again, just put those lines on there so that you, and if you don't think you need a place to look at to cut towards, you, then you don't need to put that second set of lines. The only reason I have them there is so I have something to look at to make sure that I cut straight. And then we are cutting down on these ones. So I'm just going to go on each of those marks and cut just to that center point. These are one inch strips, so that's a half an inch. These ones are cutting down a half an inch. The ones that go the other way are being cut up a half an inch, so they will fit together right to that center point. And if you go just a touch past it, it won't hurt anything, but you don't wanna go very far past it. And then what you're gonna do is you're just going to barely, there's our slice. We're gonna come over just barely and then curve right back down to that center point there so that it just gives a teeny tiny V. And we're just gonna do that all the way. And all that does is it helps us to fit them together. If you try and fit them together without any space there, you need space for that other cardboard to fit into. And if there is no gap there, they don't wanna fit together very well. So this will save you a lot of time. Plus if they're super tight, they'll wanna cock. And once you do that, just go on the back and pull off any of those little triangles because usually they don't come off because they're so little but again we're just going to cut off just a sliver I mean you know your cardboard is not very fat and the only reason we're doing this is so the other piece of cardboard fits into it so that's how skinny you want it to be and that's cutting down from the top and I'm going to now that I am these are my last two so I'm going to finish both of these up. I've done all the rest. And if you think, you know, the thing is, is that you make these individually for your box. So my exact measurements, other than you want a one inch strip, and you can even do that any size you want to. But like your spacing, you make your spacing as big as you want it. The smaller the spaces, the more supports you have to make. And... I used to think, oh, I don't want to make that many supports, so I'm not going to make my spaces very small. The smaller spaces do seem to work better, and we'll see how that looks at the end. But um, I have found that if I'm going to put this much work into something, yes, it takes a while to cut all of these supports, but it is so worth it in the end to cut however many you think you're going to need. Um or what's going to work well because like I said the bigger the space that you have to put your you know if you've got a space this big and you put your pencil in there you know it's just going to fall all over if you have a space that's only this big and you put your pencil in there 
it can only go that far. So that's the thing about having the smaller, smaller gaps. Now I've got one here for the side, and again I did exactly the same thing. I divided up my side, and then I just put this on here with a little bit of leftover on each end, just centering it, and then I just made my marks, and I put them on the top and on the bottom, and then I used the same one for all of them, and on this one I needed 11. Got a little piece of, okay. Um, so, you know, the the longer side always takes a lot more. This is the left side, this is the right side. I didn't make my mark there. Line it up here. And just mark it. Okay, and on our short ones, we're cutting up. And it doesn't really matter which ones you cut up and which ones you cut down, but be, in order to make them work, one way, whether it's your long way or your short way, has to be cut up, the other way has to be cut down. Or from the top and from the bottom, however, however you want to look at that. And again, put your little, just your little teeny tiny wedge in there. Okay, and I'm going to just cut this last one and then I'm going to be right back because my timing is getting kind of long. Okay, before you put in your dividers, I think what would be a good idea would be to go into the bottom of your box and add some kind of texture. Like just putting in some water glue and then taking some tissue paper and just texturing it up like this because then you don't have a slick, slick bottom and that will help your paint brushes from sliding sideways at all. Well, or at least a little bit. I already have my box finished and I didn't like how the they, they were kind of sliding. So what I did was I actually cut the bottom of my box open and I'm going to put some tissue paper on the bottom. Just, just kind of rough it up um, and make it not smooth to give the bottoms of the paintbrushes something to grab a hold of. And this is an added part to the video because I was already done and then I did not like that part so I decided to come back and show you that that might be a good idea. So I just cut some tissue paper a little bit bigger than my box and I am just going to just make it just a little bit wrinkly down here. Just give it a little bit of texture so that when I put those paint brushes on there if they start to slide they'll kind of hit a bit of a ripple or something and they'll stop right there. You could do lots of other things. You could actually make a grid on the bottom like with skewers um, and again like I'll tell you later in the video, you could put styrofoam in the bottom so that when you put your paint brushes in there, you can actually poke a hole for them to sit into. Um, I didn't want to put styrofoam in here because paint brushes have different size handles. And just in case I didn't put it back in the exact same hole, um, you know, if I had a little tiny paintbrush and put it in the big hole and then I tried to put the big handled paintbrush there would only be a space left with a little hole or if I want to put two or three paintbrushes in one slot you wouldn't really be able to put two or three holes in that spot you know your styrofoam um, would lose its capability of holding very well so I, I got to thinking about it last night and thought that this would be a good idea to do it this way and again I'm just I'm just putting it on here and I'm just putting it on here wrinkly I want those wrinkles because that texture is going to help my paint brushes stand a little taller you know they still can slip sideways better than I don't like putting things in like a cup I've always put things in a cup but 
I wind up putting too much in there and it's really full in the middle and really tall and everything is kind of falling sideways and when I pull out one thing a lot of things want to come with it so I really like I've always liked divided storage no matter really what the storage comes to I like my storage divided because then I can get to whatever it is I want to get to a whole lot easier okay so there we go I've got some wrinkles on the bottom and I'm gonna let that dry and then I will just close it back up again and tape it shut with duct tape and when I decorate it You'll never know I had to cut it open, but I thought I'd come in the middle here and put this in here so that you wouldn't have to do what I had to do. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, so now we have everything ready to put it together. Um, because our long strips are cut on the top, they're going to go in first. Um, if you cut your short strips on the top, then you would put those in first. But all you do is just slide it into the cuts that you made. until it's right about at the top and then what you're going to do is you may get a little crinkling you can just kind of give it a pull on each end at the same time and that will help straighten it out the one thing you want to do is make sure that your your cuts that are on this way that they're lined up I'm a little too far that way so I'm gonna pull it down this way just a little bit and I'm just going to adjust it until those look like they're about lined up and then we're just gonna go to the next one Just put those in there, line up our lines, and we can tighten them all up and everything when we get it done. We're just going to go across and do this all the way across with the, um, the ones that go sideways. I'll just do a couple of those with you and then I'll go off. This does take a few minutes to do. But um, it's definitely worth it if you're going to have all those paint brushes. It works for your pens, it works for everything, but it just works so well. Adjust this one this way a little bit. Oops. Like I said, and this is a little bit fiddly. Once you get it done, you'll be happy that you've done it. Oops, excuse me. Kind of checking out my alignment. Sometimes when you move one, it makes everybody else mess up a little bit, but you'll get there. Can even do more adjusting once you get it all together okay now I'm going to take our shorter ones and then we're just going to put it in the end line it up with each one of the you want to kind of line it up before you try and put in your second end so that otherwise these won't want to push down and you'll, you'll want to try and think, well, why won't this fit? Well, and I should have actually, I was being lazy, and since I had a bunch of the nine inches cut, I cut mine four and a half inches, and my box is only four, or my box is four inches wide. So, I really should have made them a little bit longer. It would have given me more to play with. And then you're just going to line up each one of those slots as you go. Like I said, it's a little bit fiddly, but to buy a paintbrush holder like this can be very expensive. I do have a couple, and well, I have one, and um, and it wasn't, it really was not cheap. So there we go. There's our first slot, and like I said, when we get all completely done, um we can do all of our adjusting at that point in time. They may look a little bit squiggly, but you just go ahead and you, you pull on them and you move them to where they need to be. But really, it's tempting to just do that 
um, on each one, but you really might as well wait till you get them all in. Because as you adjust, they kind of move around. Line them up, top and bottom, and then just slide each one into its slot a little bit at a time. You, it, it's easier to go across and across a little bit at a time so that you've got them all in the right spot. Now this one right here is sitting on top of my cross. It's not sitting in the slit, so it's not wanting to press down. Okay, so now they're all in. There we go. There's one, there's two. And again, I'm trying fiddling with it, trying to get it all straight, and I don't need to do that yet. I need to do that at the end. Just lining them up. And as I go, line them up again. They're all in their slots, so I'm going to push them down. And there we go. And this is what we have so far. I'll do one more because you can see how, like, cocked up this is and everything. It's all going each way. But that's going to be just fine by the time that we're done. Because I'm hurrying, I'm kind of bending my cardboard a little bit. Um, it's okay. It won't hurt anything when you're done. You don't want to rip it. This one is not lined up, so I need to get it in there. This one was not lined up. Now I know they're all lined up, so I can push the whole thing down. Push that down. I'm going to... Pull this one up a little bit. Push, pull up on your bottom one and push down on your top one at the same time. And that helps. And there we go. I'm going to finish the rest of them and then I will be right back. Okay, I've got them all in. And how cool is that with all those nice little spaces? Now what you're going to do is we are going to tape the flaps over on the side. And the way that I do that is I take both sides of my box and I make sure that it's lined up well and then I, then I press my little tab over. So you're going to line up the sides of your box and press your tab over. See now down here how these are all crooked? They were all kind of crooked like that when I started. So then I just take these two and line them up right about where I want them and then I press my tab over and then take the next two and I line them up and then I press my tab over and then take these two line them up and press my tab over and I am happy with the way that that looks you could very possibly fuss with it and possibly get it just a little bit more straighter but I'm good with that because it's going to do what I want it to do then what I do is I take small pieces of masking tape and one at a time I go from the other side of the tab over the tab and then to the other side. So start on one side of the tab. Start on one side of the tab. The tab is here. So I'm going to start on this side of it and then fold it over with the tape and then tape the tape down. And I do that all the way across with each tab. Um, I just think it gives it a little bit more strength. It grabs each tab individually. And then once I get all of the tabs tab taped down, I'm going to start here on the end. Again, I had done those the same way, but I'm going to start here on the end so I can show you after I do each one individually. Then I go all the way across with one solid piece of tape. These pieces of tape, because those tabs are going to want to lift up. See that tab right there? Just lift it up. So those tabs are going to want to lift up. But this helps hold them first, and then the second piece of tape um, helps really hold them down. So you start on one side and go to the other side. And that one popped up too. 
and that's just what happens with them. And I just put my fingers in those little square holes to give it some good pressure and to just kind of keep things straight. More to go. And there we go. Now I just reinforce them all and then take a piece of tape that's wider than the whole thing. I start on the side where my flaps are all going that way, so I want to be able to push this way. They're popping up as I go. It's okay, because I'm going to tape them all down now. And there we go, and go around the other side. It's nice if you go around the sides. That, that just gives it a little bit more support for that tape to hold down, making that actual corner. Okay, I am going to um, tape all of these down, and then I'll... Um, I can just do it while we're here um, so that you can see what I'm doing. And then we will put our paint brushes in here. Now you can use this for paint brushes. You can use this for um, pens, colored pencils. Um, if you want to do it for something short like crayons or gelatos or something like that, you just make your box shorter. You just make your box as tall as you want your, your box sides to be at a little bit more than halfway up whatever it is that you're going to put in there. And that way it won't flip out. If it's shorter than, you know, if you've got something that's four inches tall, like a gelato about four inches tall maybe, um, you're gonna wanna do like your box sides two and a half inches. Gives you plenty of room to grab them yet on top, but you miss that center point. Um, you know, you've gone past taller than that center point, and that makes it so that they don't want to flip over. If you're under that center point, they will want to fall out, and that's just frustrating. But I made my box this big. The Let's see, the brush that I got was 25 brushes, and I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I've got 72 spaces here way more than I need, but I figured since I was making it, um, I was going to go ahead and make it big enough for any other brushes that I might get sometime, and maybe I want to put some pens or something in there. I figured it would be easier, but you know, the smaller that you make it, the less dividers that you have, you know, the faster it's going to go for you, so you just decide, and pushing against those, holding up that inside pushing those flaps over but you just decide how big you want to make it if you want to make one but they really do work great and then these are the brushes that I got this week at Walmart and that we had on our list some set of brushes so we are going to just take them and put them in there now this is the end. They had the little bit of larger holes. So this one's got a really large handle. I'm going to stick that one down there. So because I'm a little bit anal, I'm going to put those brushes down there too because they're kind of like that. I'm just going to dump these brushes out. And if you haven't got your brushes yet, if you wanted to see what we were doing, this is what these brushes look like. They're very soft. There are none of those nylon brushes like like we got at the Dollar Tree, um, and there are all different types. There's natural hair, there's synthetic hair, and um, they're very nice brushes. So then we can just, I'll put all of my blue ones in here. Now I could put them together, you know, more than one in a hole, but I don't have to because I have so many spaces. And see how nicely they stand up? And if you wanted to, before you put this on, be, definitely before, you could put a piece of styrofoam in the bottom, and then you could poke your handles down into that styrofoam. And that's just another option of another thing that you could do with it. But they stand up pretty good. They, they could tilt and go sideways, but they do really well because the holes are so small. The bigger those holes were, the more that they would tempt to really... Um, have their bottoms tip over but that works really great I still have lots and lots of room I'm gonna put my 
um, brushes from the Dollar Tree in there. But the last thing to do then is just going to be to decorate it. But this is what it looks like. This works great for our brush holder and um, you can also use it for your pens or your pencils or whatever you'd like to use it for. I hope that you enjoyed the video. I will be back just shortly to show you what we'll need for next week. Um, which is actually what we were supposed to need for this week, but I got so excited to make this. Plus, I wanted some place to put these brushes once I opened them. One other quick tip. When you're done with your brushes, don't leave them in the water. Um, and especially a brush with a wooden handle. These all have plastic, but if you have a wooden handle, what will happen is the wood will swell, it will stretch here, and then when the wood contracts again when it's dry, then your head will fall off your paintbrush. But even with even if you have plastic handles, you know, make sure that you don't just leave them in the water. It's bad for your brushes. They wind up getting like this from sitting on the bottom of your jar. Um, so clean them off, then rinse them. After you've cleaned them in your paint water, then rinse them under clean water. Then they might be a little bit messy. Take your fingers and just rub them through your fingers like that to make them flat again. And just let them sit flat to dry. And then when they're dry, put them back in your holder. You don't want to get this all wet. Plus, you want to let them dry. And especially your flat brushes, um, make sure that you just run them through your fingers and straighten them out like that. That works for your round brushes, too. Um, you know, for my round brushes, I usually just kind of do like this. But you always, when you're done cleaning, you want to do that while they're wet. Just like, you know, when your hair is wet, that's when you fix it. Um... If you're not going to curl it or something you know you want to do it while they're wet because that will keep them in much better shape alrighty I'll be back in just a few to go over what we need for next week and we've made it to the end all we need to do is what we're going to need for next week we are going to need a hole punch a couple of milk jug rings or a couple of rings if you can get your hands on a milk jug ring um, they work really good for this but any other kind of ring approximately this size will work also we'll need a couple of pieces of corrugated cardboard about five by seven at least five by seven and that's what we will need for next week uh, we still had two dollars in the bank after spending an extra dollar this week so we are going to save the whole five dollars that we're not going to spend because we don't need anything for next week other than what we already have so we're going to put that five dollars in our bank to save up for something nice and here is my paintbrush holder with all the other brushes that I got from the Dollar Tree now added in and I still have lots of space. Um, I think I'm going to do an extra video um, on decorating this sometime this week if I get a chance. So thank you very much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope that you all have an outstanding day. Bye-bye.